if I were to make a top five Dragon Ball Z movies video, this would definitely be in number three or four. Hello everybody, Tyron the Guy 3 here, and welcome to the fourth po Dragon Ball Z movie review. This is the fourth Dragon Ball Z movie. This movie's titled Lord Slug, and it's definitely one of my favorites. I mean, just because of, like, overall events that take place, but, um... Timeline-wise, just like the Tree of Might, this movie takes place in a timeline in which Goku beats Frieza via the Spirit Bomb and not turning Super Saiyan and beating him on planet uh, on an exploding planet Namek. So with that said, um, the movie basically starts off with uh, Piccolo chilling in the uh, in the mountain regions, and when he's chilling in the mountain regions, Gohan's there too with Icarus. From, you know, so this takes a lot of elements from the previous, well, not a lot of elements, but at least that element from the previous movie. Like I said, Icarus is going to be in quite a few movies um, because he's a he more or less a filler character and he he obtained Icarus during this timeline. Well, mainly this timeline. Anyway, um, Icarus and Gohan are playing while, Goku, uh, while Piccolo is meditating and Gohan comes in and says hey Piccolo we learned a new trick and basically Gohan showing off that Icarus is, can dance but he can dance when Gohan's whistling unfortunately Gohan's whistling is at such a high frequency to the Namekian ears that it starts to hurt Piccolo's ears and Piccolo tells Gohan to never do that again because it hurts his ears Meanwhile, we cut to uh, the scene with Lord Slug and his henchmen, and they're about to land on planet Earth. They're about to land on planet Earth because they're in search of uh, of an area in order to freeze the planet so that they can call their own. Basically, a planet they can take over. While they're uh, headed there, one of the henchmen tries their best in order to make uh, Lord Slug young because Lord Slug is a very elderly person. And he needs to become young in order to conquer the entire planet. Meanwhile, Dr. Brief, Bulma's uh, father, notices that the ship is coming towards Earth. However, the way the ship is shaped, like a small moon, is showing off to be like a meteor or uh, an asteroid that's heading towards Earth. And then immediately the media gets the news and they feel like everybody's going to die. So what do they do? They basically call in Goku and Krillin in order to blast the meteor back, or what they think is the meteor. And Goku and Krillin use the Kamehameha wave in order to try to stop the spaceship, but it's of no avail. It doesn't do anything. And it ends up knocking Goku and Krillin out for a loop. Meanwhile, Gohan goes to check out what's going on. With the um, outfit that he had on when he was in the dead zone. Only this time he's much older now. So it's odd to see him in the outfit that he was in when he was like two years old or one years old. Or however old he was when he wore that uh, during the dead zone movie. Anyway, um, he goes to see what's going on along with Bulma, Chi Chi, Oolong. And who else was there? I don't think Master Roshi was there. Anyway, they look at um, the crater or asteroid and it opens up and reveals a bunch of uh, henchmen coming out. And they're basically announcing that Lord Slug's going to take over this planet. And when they go off to try to take over the planet and start hurting people, Gohan steps in and beats up one of the bogeys. Now this is a really cool scene, uh, from, at least for me. Because uh, it shows how useful other characters could be if they actually put more effort in. Two of the bogeys try to attack Gohan, but Chi Chi comes in and high jump kicks both of them. And it's cool because, like in Dragon Ball, she was a fighter. Like she she did martial arts as well, just like uh, Goku and the others. It's just she wasn't shown off as much, and her character is usually more or less portrayed as just a mother figure. So it is cool to see that they actually paid attention to the fact that she is, in fact, a martial artist. So she knocks out two of the bogeys, which is pretty impressive for her. She knocks those two out, but then one of them ends up knocking her out, which is upsetting. But, you know, anyway, um, Lord Slug comes out along with the rest of the uh, henchmen, and they notice that they notice that Gohan has a... Um, 
Dragon Ball on his hat, which I don't like the Dragon Ball hat that Gohan sports when he's a little kid because it essentially just makes him a giant target for all villains, but whatever. They take it off of his head and they notice that Lord Slug notices immediately what it is. And dumbass Bulma, she does this completely on accident, but it's a dumbass mistake, reveals that they'll never be able to find the rest of the Dragon Balls without a Dragon Radar. So once they heard the villains say that, um, I mean, once the villains heard Bulma say that, excuse me, they immediately take it from her. And they go off to search for the rest of the Dragon Balls while freezing the planet as well. And then uh, basically what ends up happening after that, they finally gather all the Dragon Balls and Lord Slug wishes for eternal youth. So now he's become young again. If For those of y'all who are longtime Dragon Ball fans, this looks sort of familiar. So anyway, once he gets young again and the planet's been frozen over, the rest of the uh, heroes are at Chi-Chi's house uh, seeing, trying to warm up because the planet's too damn cold now. Gohan sneaks out and tries to fight off against Lord Slug yet again. And this time he whoops a couple of the uh, henchmen. However, he ends up getting ambushed because there's too many. So Piccolo steps in and fights off a couple of henchmen himself. And Piccolo and Gohan end up fighting Lord Slug's main henchmen. I do not remember the name for these. I think uh, one of them is named Met Metamacha. The one that Gohan ends up fighting. And Metamacha ends up showing that... Uh, to have the upper hand on Gohan. And meanwhile, while this fighting is happening, um, Go, Goku and Krillin wake back up and re uh, head back to the battlefield in which everything's going down. Because the only way they were able to regain conscience was because they had uh, eaten the sensu beans that Yajirobe provided when he got there. So when Goku and Krillin show up, uh, Goku ends up beating the rest of the henchmen, while Piccolo beats the bigger henchman. I can't remember his name right now. Excuse me. But uh, after that, it's a standoff between Goku, Krillin, and Lord Slug. And Krillin basically tries to fight Lord Slug, but he ends up getting his ass completely handed to him. And then while that's happening, Lord Slug ends up fighting off against Goku. Now... Uh, before I start, because I know they did it um, in the fight with Gohan and Piccolo versus the Bogies, but um, oh, this is this introduction to the movie, to Dragon Ball Z movies that play official rock band music, and um, because a lot of the other, the Dragon Ball Z movies before this one didn't do that. But this is the start of them starting to play music from uh from famous rock bands. And a lot of people do not like this type of um approach to the movie. Like some people say that the rock, like if you're watching the um Funimation American dub, then this is what you get introduced to. A lot of people were against this. Yeah, a lot of people were against this. A lot of people did not like this approach at all. However, I did like it. And um, I was a fan of Disturbed after the Lord Slug movie. So when I watched the movie again and noticed that Disturbed music was in this movie, it was really entertaining for me. I thought that rock music fits perfectly fine in Dragon Ball Z. I mean, yeah, the rock music didn't exactly come in great sync with what was going on. Because it, the rock music in which Goku is fighting Lord Slug, the music has nothing to The songs, the lyrics in the song have nothing to do with the fight. I guess, but come on, it's it's nice rock music. I will say it was a bit obsessive, but for the most part, I rather enjoyed it. I didn't think it was terrible. And you have the option to watch it in the Japanese in Japanese music, the original Japanese score, so it's not too bad. But like I said, I'm I was a huge fan of Disturbed, and to see Disturbed be a rock band that's playing songs for Dragon Ball Z was pretty entertaining for me. That's what I feel. So, anyway, Lord Slug shows to be having the upper hand in the fight, by the way. Goku's getting his 
ass whooped. Oh, and Piccolo ends up beating, um, I think Piccolo ends up beating the one of the bogeys anyway. He ends up beating uh, the bogey, but he, I think, uh, he tries to fight Lord Slug too, but he ends up getting, uh, knocked unconscious. So anyway, um, while that's going on, Goku's pretty much about to die because Lord Slug's crushing him to death. And then, once it seems like all is lo- all hope is lost, uh, and Lord Slug's about to land the final blow, Goku ends up transforming into a Super Saiyan? Not exactly. Um, when I was a little kid and I watched this movie, I basically called this half Super Saiyan. The Dragon Ball Wiki calls this false Super Saiyan. So, more or less, it that's what they call it. It's it basically um, a Super Saiyan that's not quite Super Saiyan. This is not. This is the movie that's not the official transformation of Goku turning Super Saiyan. King Kai calls it Super Saiyan in the movie because King Kai uh, is overseeing the fight, but it's not Super Saiyan. So anyway, Goku turns false Super Saiyan and ends up gaining the upper hand in the fight again. Uh, and even goes as far as to break Lord Slug's arm while they're fighting. And during this, Lord Slug decides he's just going to go ahead and rip his arm completely off. And then he regenerates a new one. Now, what is the one race of people that can just regenerate their body right after they've ripped it off? The Namekians, much like Piccolo. And when he does that, um, he ends up uh, taking off the mask and revealing that he's a Namekian, which is weird because King Kai should have known all about this anyway, but he fin- King Kai finally decides to stop and tell Goku, look out Goku, this is Lord Slug, the Namekian that used to live on Namek but was banished because he was too evil, much like King Piccolo. King Piccolo and Lord Slug and several other Namekians were known as a certain clan of Namekians known as the Dragon Clan Namekians. And since they were shown to be too evil or showed evil purposes, uh, which didn't exactly go with the peaceful harmony of Namek, they were banished to other planets. Kami was banished to, I mean King Kai, act. King Piccolo, excuse me, was banished to planet Earth while Lord Slug was banished to some other planet he probably took uh, destroyed a long time ago. So with that said, the Dragon Clan to make in show that they have the ability to do uh, to increase their size, which King Piccolo, uh, well, not Pink King Piccolo, Piccolo Jr. did it a long time ago when uh, Goku was fighting him at the World Tournament. So Lord Slug ends up doing it and ends up fighting Goku and he has clearly has the upper hand because Goku can't fight a big ass cooler. I mean a big ass uh Lord Slug, excuse me, that's the next movie, sorry. And he can end up fighting a big ass Lord Slug. And Piccolo tries to help in the fight as well, but it's it's not helping at all. And uh what ends up happening, Goku's getting crushed by Lord Slug's hand to the point where he could die if he gets crushed anymore. So Piccolo th- th- thinks about a way that they can stop him. And it finally hits Piccolo. Oh yeah, we can do that. And Piccolo basically tells uh, Gohan, who's unconscious by the way, to do the thing that he did um, earlier in the movie, which was whistle. Piccolo is telling uh, Gohan he has to whistle. Piccolo ends up ripping his own ears off of his uh, head, which, oh, God, that sounds painful. But he can regenerate them, so no harm done. But he tells Gohan to whistle. And Gohan barely gains consciousness and starts whistling. And when he starts whistling, the frequency that would have hurt Piccolo's ears, which was a really high frequency, is freaking quadrupled. Now that Lord Slug is a Namekian and he's like, his eardrums are huge. So now when Gohan's whistling, Lord Slug's ears are just writhing with agony and pain. And he drops, uh, he well he doesn't drop Goku, but he lowers Goku down because he can't hold Goku for real anymore because of how painful the whistling is. So Piccolo uses this chance to get to Goku and he's reaching for him, which is weird. Piccolo can stretch, whatever. He reaches towards Goku and uh, grabs his hand and transfers all of his energy to Goku. So now Goku's powered up with Piccolo's energy. Goku manages to escape 
uh, Lord Slug's clutches. And he and uh, Goku ends up now powered up with both of them goes Kaioken. So now he's got so much power. And he basically uses this to evade Lord Slug strikes and make it up into the... Um, and uh, knock him out for a while. Lord Slug comes back and Goku ends up gathering energy from the sun so that he can gain enough power to make a successful spirit bomb. While Lord Slug ends up uh, close to attacking Goku, Goku launches the spear bomb, hits Lord Slug, destroys the entire ship that was making the entire planet freeze, knocks both of them out, and it turns the planet returns the planet back to normal. And with that said, Goku saves the day, and everybody's back to normal, and everybody, you know, happy ending, everybody's peaceful and everything, and this is funny, Gohan's like, oh my god, Piccolo, your ears, and then Piccolo regenerates his ears back, and everybody laughs, and basically that's how the movie ends. Uh, this movie, I really like this movie for several reasons. And I definitely will say it's a lot better than Tree of Might because the characters aren't so one-dimensional. But we did it does end up starting a trend of um uh it did this trend only lasts two movies, I think. Where the trend is that uh the villains are a certain way. Like one villain has a weird power, the other villain's like a very feminine like guy. And then the last villain is like a big, stupid, bulking idiot. And it starts a trend. That's what trend it usually starts. And you could say this trend was actually in the Dead Zone movie to some degree, but it wasn't complimented on. But at least these characters show a little bit more personality, I guess. I mean, as far as henchmen go. But Lord Slug's like backstory is very similar to King Piccolo's. If you watch Dragon Ball. So this is a good way to get into uh, the series. If you've never seen a plot used this way before. If you've already seen Dragon Ball and the King Piccolo saga. Then this this is very cut and paste. A very copy and paste. But at the same time it does show that there's more Namekians in the Dragon Clan. Which gives Piccolo and his race more backstory. So I like how... The uh, Tree of Might was more or less like the Saiyan movie. And this was more or less the Namekian movie. Like the what would happen if King Piccolo had continued to rule the world type shit. So it was good to see like a Namekian uh, uh, backstory movie. Right after a Saiyan backstory movie. So this movie definitely, but however the difference is, this movie definitely shows to have a lot more personality going for it than Dead Zone. Like I said, it's it's one of my favorites, and I like um, that theming, the theming of this movie and how well it was used. A couple of things I don't like, however, was Boma being stupid enough to reveal about the Dragon Radar. That just it seemed off for her. I also liked uh, Chi Chi actually fighting because she tried to fight in the Dead Zone movie and ended up getting smacked. But she ends up coming more or less successful in this movie until she gets knocked out by a, a, a bogey. But, you know, it's good to see this movie come in with a, night, with a good style of, uh, of comedy as well with the whole... Um, this is with the whole whistling uh, scene at the beginning of the movie. Um, it was good to see each of the characters put in work to uh, beat the main villain. Like in most of the movies that we uh, that we've done the review of so far, that I've done the review of so far, it was mostly just Goku pulling in most of the work, or Gohan uh, unexpectedly won the first one, and then in the second movie, Goku used the spear bomb while the others just more or less buy time. And then in the third movie, same thing. But in this movie, they put in more work to help Goku. Like, the work that they used in order to help Goku beat Lord Slug was was very well used. And I think what ends up happening, yeah, and in the movie when Goku goes Kaioken, he burst through Lord Slug's stomach, which was hinting at how Goku beat King Piccolo so long ago. Only uh, in this one, I think Goku punches Lord Slug's stomach and bursts through it instead of uh, headbutting it like Kid Goku did. So it was a nice throwback, I guess. 
But yeah, the, this movie was very. I would introduce this movie to people who want to watch Dragon Ball Z, but see each of the characters be more or less more useful than they used to be. And if they also want to know more about like Namekians, like if they got introduced to Piccolo and want to know more about Piccolo's race, then this is a good way to help expand the Namekian culture. We see exactly what happens. I would like to see, I would have liked to see this plot point touched a little bit more. Like I'm sure Lord Slug and uh, King Piccolo weren't the only two rogue Namekians. I'm sure there had to have been more. So it's good to see exactly how this affects Piccolo and things like that. He, even there's a scene where it's like uh, Lord Slug says he had he has no problem killing one of his own uh, kind, but Piccolo Piccolo has no problem with it either. But you know he still it still makes you think, wow. With that said, um, the false Super Saiyan transformation was pretty cool. I guess they wanted to make the movie after this one, the one where Goku officially transforms into a Super Saiyan via the movie timeline. But, uh, via this timeline, the one where Goku beats Frieza via the Spirit, uh, spirit Bomb. So, it was a good, um, I can see why they made him turn false Super Saiyan just to give him a slight advantage. And they needed a way for Goku to uh, break Lord Slug's arm so he can rip it off and regenerate. Um, other than that, oh, and the music, like I said, I like the music, it's a guilty pleasure, I really like the disturbed mu uh, soundtrack in this movie, but some people don't like it, some people prefer the Japanese score, and I think in the version I have now, because the VHS version has the disturbed soundtrack, however, the version I have now is a Funimation DVD package, so I have no choice but to listen to the freaking, um, Japanese score. I think I can change the music, but um that was basically what happened. It's good to to li like I said it's a guilty pleasure to see uh, Dragon Ball Z fights happening in that that style. The next few movies have that too. And it stops at some point, but as of now they they keep doing rock music in order to emphasize on on uh, the fighting, the fast-paced action-like fighting of Dragon Ball Z, and it definitely does set the tone right as well, right as well. If it were up to me, I think uh, Dragon Ball Z's overall score would just be rock music, but not with lyrics. It'd just be like the guitar and drums and bass and shit. But other than that, um, leave how you feel about the uh, Lord Slug movie in the comments, as well as any of the other movies I've reviewed so far. Um, then uh, for tomorrow, or technically today, because it's 12 o'clock, it's after 12 o'clock after I did this review, I'm going to do two movies in one day, but I'm not going to, co to combine them in one video. I'm going to do one video, upload it, do the other video, upload it. So I have both of those movies review, uh, reviewed in one day, because I want to go ahead and get those two movies uh I want to review both of those movies since, one, I've been absent for a while and there's a large gap, and two, these movies are connected. Like the, These two movies are connected to each other, so I want to go ahead and review both of them, but I, I'm going to review them in two separate videos because doing a collaboration of both movies' plots would take forever. So, yeah, with that said, the next movie we will be doing the review of is Movie 5, Revenge of Cooler. Another really good movie. So I'll see you all then. Tyrone the God 3 out everybody.